We have an Earth-directed solar storm on its way, and some new big flare regions are just right around the corner. Those stories and more in this week's Spotlight. Space weather this week is keeping with the theme of Earth-directed solar storms. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, we don't have a lot of regions uh, that are very active. In fact, region 34, 86, and 87 have been pretty quiescent the last couple days. But take a look at this filament right here. On the 16th, it erupts in this big puff right there. Whoosh! Do you see that? Now, we do have a coronagraph view, and it's got a few uh, solar storms that were launched at the same time. But take a look at the coronagraph. Look at the halo right here. This big halo, that's the region that we're looking at. That is definitely a partially Earth-directed solar storm. Some of it's going north of us, and then we've got another one that's going south of Earth. But it's this fa this little faded halo here that's the one, that one to watch. Now, that is the Earth-directed solar storm, and it looks like from right now that we're going to get hit right around the 20th. So we're paying attention to that. Now, it also opened up this finger-like coronal hole. We may see a tiny bit of fast solar wind from that coronal hole. Kind of doubtful, but we might get a little bit of fast wind chaser from that. And then also we have this coronal hole as well. So this coronal hole is going to be sending us a little bit of fast solar wind as well. Uh, that, that's kind of like a chaser. Again, it's not going to last all that long. It's probably going to affect high latitudes more than it's going to affect mid latitudes. But on top of that, as we take a look at the east limb of the sun, we've got some activity in the south and also some in the north. In fact, this region here has been a bit of a solar storm producer on the sun's far side. And as we take a look at our HMI helioseismology, uh, far-sighted viewers views from the J from JSOC, we can actually see in the gold regions these dark spots right here. These are old regions 3472 and region 3474 on the far side. And as you can see, as they make their way through the far-sided sun, boy, they manage to stay pretty big. If anything, they actually grow a bit and get better formed. So what that means is that we're going to actually have some decent uh, activity here rotating into Earth view here over the next couple days, maybe even the three or four days, and that could boost uh, the chance for radio blackouts with big solar flares. So just realize that, hey, we got solar flares possibly back on the menu. Now, returning to our solar store prediction model, Enlil, this is NOAA's version of the model. The top panel's density, the bottom panel's velocity. You're looking down at the sun from the North Pole with Earth being off to the right. Now, as we set this uh, solar storm model in motion, you can see that solar storm being launched mainly to the west of Earth. It also is going slightly north of Earth, but it is definitely going to be a direct hit. In, in fact, NOAA suggests that the impact will be early on the 20th. Now, this may actually begin to give us a little bit of something on the 19th, because as we take a look at our NASA's prediction model, their version of it, and we set this again, that we're looking down at the sun from the North Pole with Earth being off to the right. As we set this prediction model in motion, you can see the impact of the solar storm in their case is about 1800 UTC on the 19th. So that means Aurora photographers, you may get a little bit of activity starting late on the 19th if this storm ends up arriving a bit early and the, strong, the storm could be a bit stronger than anticipated. Uh, and that means we could get Aurora clear down to mid latitude. So you better be sure to keep your batteries charged. Now, switching to our moon, we are now passing through the third quarter phase on our way to a full moon. And by the 24th, the moon will be about 90% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, like maybe some aurora, you're going to have this bright companion. So you're going to need to check your local rise and set times. Now, switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the hit from that Earth-directed solar storm, and it should be a pretty weak storm overall. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting uh, minor storm conditions with up to about a 40% chance of a major storm, and this will be mainly on the 20th, but then we might get a little bit of some fast solar wind chasing that, which might keep things up at active conditions for a little while before things settle down. So aurora photographers, you should definitely get a chance to get some decent aurora. Now at mid latitudes, well, we're only expecting active conditions, but we do have up to about a 15% chance of a minor storm, maybe a little bit more. And again, it'll be followed by a small pocket of fast solar wind, but really only about on the 20th, are you going to get any decent uh, uh, chances to, for, for some strong aurora at all. But aurora photographers, you know, don't give up hope. It's not as good as the other 
uh, opportunities that we've had earlier, but it is still a chance. So definitely, if you're dedicated, you could chase. Now, switching to our solar flare and dayside radio blackout outlook over the coming week. Well, we don't have a lot of active regions in Earth view right now. So right now, our solar flux is sitting in about the mid-120s. That could rise up to about the 130s by the end of the week because we have those two new regions that are going to be rotating into Earth view. But we are nonetheless, we are still sitting at minor noise on the radio bands. So radio propagation on Earth's dayside is pretty good. We don't have much of a risk, only about a 20% chance of of M-class flares at an R1 to R2 level radio blackout over the next couple days. That risk might actually rise a little bit as we uh, get those new regions rotating into Earth view, but I don't know as of yet whether or not we're going to be jumping to moderate noise on the band. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders expect that as we roll into about mid next week, that risk for radio blackouts is going to rise. Now, switching to our radiation storm and polar aviation outlook over the coming week, everything is in the green right now. We are sitting at the D1 normal range for you aviators. That's at flight level 360, which is also the S0 quiet range for the rest of us. We really have very little chance, about a 1% risk of getting a radiation storm at an S1 to S2 level right now. And this is because we just don't have any big flare players on the Earth facing disk. Now, that risk may rise as time goes on. On. As we move into the mid of next week, I doubt it. I think everything's going to continue to stay uh, pretty low. But if those radio blackout risk does rise with the new regions that are going to rotate into Earth view, so might the chances for radiation storms. But for now, all you frequent flyers, and this is air crew, including uh, high risk passengers, you are all in the clear. So the space weather this week is actually looking pretty good. We do have an Earth-directed solar storm that's not going to be a super strong storm, at least not like the ones we've had over the earlier part of this month. But it still could bring aurora down from high latitudes, possibly down into mid-latitudes for a little bit and give us a little bit more chances uh, for some beautiful views. And now amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, you know, we're not having big flare players right now on the Earth-facing disk, so the radio blackout risk is staying pretty low and radio propagation is remaining pretty good. So enjoy this, especially on Earth's day side. We might have a little bit of issues on Earth's night side as this weak solar storm rolls through, but it shouldn't last all that long. So overall conditions for you should be pretty good as well. And now you GPS users, well, you know, we don't have much of a risk for radio blackouts on Earth's day side, so your GPS reception should be pretty good even near dawn and dusk. But we do have some issues. We have a weak solar storm that's going to hit us on Earth's night side in particular. So as long as you stay away from Aurora, your GPS reception should be pretty top-notch. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.